Weeks after delays and travel chaos at major airports made headlines and prompted federal government to intervene, the Greater Toronto Airport Authority is out with a progress report as part of a campaign to help educate the public on the situation and remedies. So Deborah Flint is the president and CEO of the GTAA, that's the Greater Toronto Airport Authority, and she joins us live now on CP24 Breakfast. Deborah, good morning. So uh, you've seen some of the scathing social media accounts of long lineups at Pearson, luggage left on the tarmac, some people even sleeping at the airport after missing connecting flights. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate the average experience at Pearson at its worst, and where is it now on that scale? It's getting better. Uh, you know, this has been, this is a globally connected industry. We're seeing challenges with the restart this summer here at Toronto Pearson, at many airports across Europe and in the United States as well. It's very challenging to restart an industry like this. Mm -hmm. And we had significant challenges several weeks ago, the beginning of summer. And the good news is that, you know, those are all getting better. We're seeing both labor being restored uh, across the system at airlines and government agencies. Uh, and we're seeing processes improve. And uh, increased processes were a big challenge uh, as we started the summer. Deborah, you know, this is something that's happening globally. We're hearing about this at airports in Germany and London. Heathrow has actually asked airlines to stop selling tickets for the rest of the summer so that they can get a grip on this situation. You know, do we see the airport here going to such a measure? We've been working very closely with our airlines for a long time on uh, ensuring that they are able to have schedules and uh, match that with their ability to demand. Uh, so we provided support uh, for those airline schedule reductions. And here at Pearson, uh, airlines have made those schedule reductions voluntarily. And I believe that's because of the collaboration that we provided uh, to the airlines with the government agencies to help smooth out the processes. And we've seen many things improve, as I've said. Uh, processing time for passengers waiting at the security checkpoint mm -hmm. has greatly improved. Uh, 80 to 88 percent of passengers process through screening uh, in less than 15 minutes. That's a drastic improvement over what we had before. And you know we had a significant challenge with passengers that were being held on board aircraft because the customs hall was mm -hmm. very full. And that was also due to staffing and increased processes. That has now improved from an average of 30 minutes uh, to 16 minutes. Our goal is to get to zero, uh, hold on board waiting, and we'll continue to work with the government and our agencies to improve that. Again, we're not out of the woods. I don't want to give that impression. Uh, there are still challenges. Uh, we've grown on an on a, a annualized percent basis. We've grown in the last four months, the equivalent of over eight years of growth. So, you know, again, you see it here in Canada, you see it across Europe and even in the United States. Uh, it's a difficult system to restart, uh, but we are headed in a more positive Positive direction. Okay, Deborah, that's promising to hear. But going on, on back to social media, there are still some accounts of long lines as recently as the last few days. Others say they breezed through hours earlier than they expected. So why are there such different experiences after weeks of trying to tackle this? Uh, there, there are, uh, and as I said, like you know, we are still very challenged uh, across the sector, uh, and that's why we're informing passengers more about what they can expect. Uh, today, we've released uh, an interactive tool online uh, that is an infographic that gives uh, a couple things. Number one, you know, who does what at the airport. Uh, when passengers understand that, they, you know, I believe knowledge is power, of course, and they can just feel more equipped about what they can experience at the airport. It has links to where they can find real-time information for security screening, for example. We also have a new dashboard that we've released that gives two weeks of uh, wait time and peak time information for the different processes and travel that happen at Pearson. There's domestic travel, there's international. And we're unique because we have a U.S. border mm -hmm. right within our airport. So for each terminal, we break down what the two-week average of wait times are throughout the day. So you can tra uh, plan when you're going to travel, as well as plan your trip to the airport with more information. And we're going to continue to refine that and add more and more tools uh, to, again, provide the passengers with much information and help to ease the, the anxiety that comes with the air travel experience today.
Yeah, sounds like it's going to be a concerted effort from everyone to try to get this under control. Uh, but Deborah Flint, CEO and president of the Greater Toronto Airport Authority, thanks for your time this morning. Thanks, Deborah.